All right. Welcome, everyone. This is the podcast called Unveiling. My name is Jordan Bain. I'm a senior guide and certified Kabbalah instructor in the Modern Mystery School. My guest tonight is Christina Lozano. Um, she is someone I've known for 10 years now. And I first met her when I went to Healers Academy myself back in 2010, and she was doing admin um, and doing registrations. And she gave me this amazing smile and I felt instantly welcomed. And so she was really literally my first point of contact with international programs at the Modern Mystery School headquarters up in Toronto and Canada. She's an international instructor. She teaches Kabbalah as well. And also Wicca within the Mystery School, we have a Wiccan lineage. She's a Wiccan high priestess and also a plate holder, basically like one of the lineage holders for the Wiccan lineage within the Mystery School for all the Wiccan magical teachings. She's the third step, third step ritual master. She's a guide, master healer, and she's also the vice president of Modern Mystery School Canada and a member of the Modern Mystery School International admin team at headquarters up in Toronto. Her particular passion is to bridge deep metaphysical teachings into practicality in everyday life and to inspire others to awaken their own passion and purpose. Whether it's applying teachings of Kabbalah or the magic of Wicca or the tools of the path of initiation, Christina guides every student with a unique personal formula to find their own joy, peace, and whatever it is that they truly seek. So Christina, thank you so much for being a guest on my podcast soon. I really appreciate your time and your presence. And is there anything else that you wanted to add before we get started? Well, I have to thank you, Jordan, for inviting me on on this podcast. I'm happy to be here. And yeah. Awesome. So, you know, one of the things that I think people really connect with is stories. And, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story, because I don't even know if I know all of it, maybe bits and pieces from times when we've had a chance to spend time together up in Canada. But how did you first find the Modern Mystery School? And how did you how did you get involved? What led to you sitting here today? Hmm. Uh, I'm happy to share this story because there's probably not many people who know actually how, mm -hmm. how this all started. Um, it actually started with martial arts, if you would believe mm -hmm. it or not. Uh, so um, it was actually in 2003, I was taking a kickboxing class at a community center, just kind of something to try out. And the instructor at the time said, you know, you look like you like this. You should come check out like a, my dojo where I train. So I went with him one day to, to check out his dojo. And yeah, it was pretty cool, you know, beautiful, you know, beautiful setup, uh, Buddha statue, flags. And, you know, you could really feel like a true martial arts essence while there. But, but I was just playing around. I didn't, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I was like, okay, this is cool. But I definitely felt that resonance, right? Put that aside for a few months and uh, I can remember the day I was driving down the street and I had the distinct message come into my mind, go sign up for that dojo. Mm. It came in like a lightning, go sign up for that dojo. And I was just driving down the street running errands. And so I took a sharp right turn. I was in the neighborhood, turned, went down to the dojo. It was like 10 a.m. on a weekday. You know, I don't think they were expecting a walk-in. Uh, there was a few, a handful of people training on the floor. Uh, opened the door, and there was a man at the desk. And I think I took him off guard because, again, I don't think they're expecting a walk-in. And I said, "I want to sign up." And the man at the desk said, "Well, do you want to learn more? Do you want to know how this all works?" And I said, "Nope, sign me up." <laughs> well, are, are you sure you want to hear about all the different martial arts we teach and the principles behind it? I was like, "No, sign me up." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've never heard this story before. This is okay. Awesome. Uh, well, uh, surprise twist the man behind the desk uh, is uh, the man you know as Ipsissimus Dave Lanyon. Mm -hmm. It was his dojo. And at the time, he was known as Sifu Dave or Sensei Dave to me. Uh, and he was a martial arts teacher running a dojo, a really successful dojo in, uh, in our city. And uh, so I signed up and started training. Um, a couple months later, I also roped my husband into training, uh, or my, he was my boyfriend at the time. Uh, and at that time, uh, I was running, um, a magazine. I 
I ran a, a business, I ran a magazine, a culture, a life and culture kind of magazine for the city that I lived in. And uh, Dave was also running another business at the time. He had not only the JoJo, but he also had a light center, a healing center where he was doing energy healing and hypnotherapy and mystery school work. You know, a, a really amazing uh, light center, healing center. And uh, one fateful day at, at that dojo, he approached me and he said, you know, I run another business uh, and we work with energy in that business that I run. And I'd like to advertise that business in your magazine because your magazine has really good energy. Hmm. And I remember that conversation. I, I can remember exactly where we were standing. I can remember the feeling because it was the first time in my life, another human out loud had spoken those words about energy that mm. you know, like naming energy as a, as a real thing, as a substantive thing that, you know, your magazine is good energy. That was the best compliment anyone could have ever given me, you know, mm. not that it was well-designed, well-written, well-published, but it had good energy. So I was mm. like, okay. So we, um, you know, we established a, a, a dynamic there and we started to work together. And, and of course he was, you know, training me at the club and, um, and also we started to get to know each other. And I was in my, you know, twenties at the time, and I had struggled with depression and anxiety in my teens. And he recognized that as you might, might imagine he would. Um, so he invited me to his center to, to try some things for, to help. Right. And so I received the life activation, believe it or not. I attended a presentation called the seven ancient mystery schools, you know, just like many initiates today, how they're getting started in the mystery school life activation, attending a presentation. Um, that's what I did. I, I can remember, I can still remember seeing the flyer for the seven ancient mystery schools and looking down at those words, seven ancient mystery schools and having never heard seven ancient mystery schools in my life. Ne never heard that term, never heard the word mystery schools in my life to that point. But I knew I could feel it in my heart. There was something, there was a resonance. I needed to do this. Mm -hmm. So I got initiated. I started taking classes. I, I got involved. Um, I, yeah, started taking classes, started, you know, doing stuff at, at his center there. And, um, and again, at the time I was working in publishing, I was, uh, you know, producing printed materials and, and I had this idea that I, that I pitched to him. I said, you know, the mystery school needs a newsletter. And he's like, that's a great idea. And so <laughs> that idea landed me a role on what was then called the Canadian leadership team at the time. And uh, Ipsissimus Dave and Divina Franca, his wife, were in the early stages of opening up what was the Canadian headquarters for a modern mystery school at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and so my idea for the newsletter came to fruition and we were producing more than a newsletter. We, we produced a magazine called Magus, which had uh, articles by, you know, founder Goodney and, you know, many of the master teachers from all over. Uh, we have since stopped producing that magazine and now we have articles on the Modern Mystery School website, which I also facilitate that. But that led into me kind of creating a role for myself uh, within this team. And I actually became the very first staff member of Ipsissimus Dave and Davina Franca for the Canadian headquarters. Um, and they began to facilitate and bring in founder good need to come teach classes. And that evolved as things evolved with the mystery school. And um, we eventually evolved into the North American headquarters. So not just Canadian headquarters, but our location became the North American headquarters. Uh, and then eventually the international headquarters, which is what it is today. Uh, and it's, you know, an amazing facility, facility where we host you know, students, yourself, and many initiates from all over the world to come for training. So, you know, what has started out with me kickboxing um, and pitching this idea for a magazine, because I love to do that kind of stuff, uh, ended up, you know, evolving and or organically growing into the role that I have today, which mm -hmm. is 
uh, you know, my official title is that I'm the vice president of Modern Mystery School Canada, but really I'm a part of an amazing team at headquarters in Toronto. And um, I work with, you know, a number of, of individuals here and I, I'm, a, I'm a part of a team. I am a member that gets to contribute to the whole of, of what we do. Yeah. I was going to say in your intro, um, you know, you're really one of the several incredibly key people who makes everything happen in terms of all the programs and all the logistics. And I've come up and been trained by you and the team up there. And it's just absolutely mind blowing what you guys do. So my hat is continually off to you, even though I don't wear hats. If I did, <laughs> I would always be taking it off and be like, wow, these, these amazing servants of light are just constantly working so that all these, all these programs and all these classes at the, at the highest levels in the mystery school can really take place for, you know, thousands of students every year coming through Canadian headquarters. So thank you in a very direct way to you and all the team. It's been, it's been a year now since I've seen you all because of COVID. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. we can resolve that whole COVID thing soon and get back to what we, what we love to do and see each other. So I'd love to hear as a perfect segue, you know, what is your daily life like both as a, as a guide and as a team member there? Um, on the MMS INT admin team? What, what do you do? Like you wake up in the morning, you go to bed at night, what happens in between those things? Ooh, what happened? Well, okay. Well, um, you know, being a guide and a ritual master really is a 24 seven job, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, so yes, you know, wake up in the morning, go to bed at night, still a ritual master, still a guide through those sleeping hours. Mm -hmm. um, but also from, you know, the minute I wake up, I'm blessed because my husband is also a guide and a ritual master and an international mm -hmm. instructor. So, uh, you know, my whole life is, you know, immersed in service and in service to the light. And we do this work together as a family. Um, I have a four-year-old son. So my day starts early with my little guy. And just like many moms with small kids, that's how my day starts. I start, you know, I start my day off with my son and, and getting going, getting him out the door. I bring my kid to school. I, uh, I go to the office, kind of like how most people start their days. Maybe a little bit different is that my office also includes, you know, magical objects and statues and <laughs> beautiful uh, decor. And part of, part of the, you know, uh, opening up of my office is lighting a gorgeous altar and setting personal space before getting to dive into the tasks of the day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yes, daily on the daily, I work uh, from the office of our INT headquarters and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the beauty is that every day is different. Every day we are tackling, you know, different things. Yes. There's the kind of like typical standard administrative duties, there's planning, there's meetings, there's collaborations, but, um, you know, things evolve, things are constantly changing and growing. And there's this amazing container, which is a sacred temple space that we get to work in and um, things are always evolving. So we get to, we get to really, um, we get to really practice what we teach, you know, in this mystery school that, that things always must be growing and creating and evolving. Uh, and, you know, for instance, I had the, uh, I, have, I have a four-year-old son. So when I w was pregnant and he was born, I got to take my mat leave. I got to take a, you know, a step, a step back for a, a split second, what felt like a split second, <laughs> um, a lifetime ago. But, you know, I got to spend that time with my son uh, and, and then come back and you know, rejoin the team and continue to to contribute and serve in a different capacity than I did before. And that's the beauty of, you know, this team and this work is that we we are constantly honoring each other, honoring each other's growth and progression and and allowing that space for each other to evolve and step into new roles, new possibilities. Um, you know, for instance, I started off my my role uh, you know, with pitching the idea for a newsletter. And here I am, you know, almost 15 years later, 
doing all kinds of different things. Yes, you know, some administrative things, but you know, now I, I manage our web presence, the website, um, a lot of uh, our, you know, our social media and many other projects. Mm -hmm. So things that, you know, I might have done early on have shifted and changed and, and our team has evolved. So it's, it's a really, it's a really special thing. And um, yeah, so that's yeah. kind of like what I do all day. Yeah. Work and things work changes as, as I go. Yeah. It's, it's still literally, I mean, I'm not even trying to be cheesy here, but it's still literally a mystery to me how you guys do everything you do and how this, um, this work is so supported by having what you all do up at the headquarters in Canada, like behind the scenes, you know, that everything is energy. And so everything you all are doing is working with energy as well, even though it might seem to someone, who, you know, and that's, this is why we're talking about dispelling myths in this podcast. It's like, it might seem to someone on the outside who hasn't really seen what you do or what life is like in doing admin um, that, you know, there's, there's all these office things and that that isn't really the same thing as light work, but it, they're not really separate, mm -mm. you know, like being organized with, how we run our office and how we do a life activation. They're obviously different activities, but they're so interconnected and, and that um, can be a little hard to see that, but hopefully we can shine a little bit of light on that and other yeah. things as well. Yeah, I think I, I'm really you know glad you, you brought that up because that's something we all feel very passionate about. I think I can speak <laughs> for some of the other team members here is that like, you know, the admin work, the office work that facilitates the ability for us to train more life activation practitioners, to support the guides, to support the teachers, to create this structure um, that allows for the, the school to expand and grow. And, yeah. you know, it, it's not, it's, it's different, it looks different than the light work than hands-on healing, which I also get to do. I also schedule clients and have that kind of thing happening and teach classes on evenings and weekends and do sessions. Um, but, you know, creating the container, the administration, the function, the structure is very much uh, necessary and needed. And that's truly under the guidance of, you know, Ipsissimus Dave and Davina Franco, what they've been able to create and their leadership uh, to allow for this to happen for, you know, on an international level, you know, yeah. things that we support. Absolutely. And how we do it is, is, is that's the magic. And that's the magic of of being flexible and change, you know, always changing, always growing. You can't stay the same. You can't get stuck in any one thing. You can't get attached to any one thing or the way any one thing operates. Um, we've always got to flow and do different things and try different things. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. Something that's always been so different to me about mystery school, because I came from so many other spiritual traditions before I found mystery school work is how grounded it is and how there's just no escaping what needs to be done in the real world. Yeah. And the real world is always right here. It's not like somewhere else. It's not like, well, inside this healing temple is just the light work and everything else out there is the real world. Yeah. So there's this way that you know we have to weave all of this as one fabric so that we can really get the work done. And um, that's that's like, a lot of people really, I think, get blown away, even though we have something in Boston that's like one fiftieth the size of what you all do in terms of setting up programs and how many programs we run here in Boston compared to Toronto. Um, you know, we, we just get a tiny taste of that. And then someone comes in, maybe joins our team, maybe assists or volunteers or helps out. And they're just like, oh, my God, there's so much happening that I didn't even I wasn't even aware this was all going on. I just kind of took it for granted. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, you are all juggling about a million balls all at once. It's the magic behind the magic, right? Yeah, absolutely. That is a really good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the things that, speaking of misconceptions um, or just ideas that people have? Because we all come from our backgrounds where we have ideas about like, this is how this works and this is how that works. And um, this is what something means. Then we, we, it's easy because when we don't know, we tend, I think as human beings to just make assumptions, right? Like when, when we want to think about something we don't yet understand, we usually fall back on what we think we already know. Right. 
And when we're entering into the mysteries, that doesn't necessarily work because things, the simplest little things, like to use what you all do at um, INT admin there, the simplest little things that to me make no sense as a student for your team, you've thought about that for five years and there's an exact reason why it works that way. Mm -hmm. And that's every single thing we do in the school. When I first started training, um, you know, 10 years ago with, with Verla, who was one of the lovely guests we had on a few weeks ago, talking about Kabbalah. And she was training me as a Kabbalah study group leader um, back nine or 10 years ago. And one of the things she first said to me in that training process, because I had come from all these other spiritual traditions, she was like, Jordan, in true metaphysics, nothing we teach is ever random. We know way in advance why we're going to say what we're going to say, how we're going to say it, when we're going to say it, and how it relates to everything else that we're going to say. And I was like, you mean you're not just like channeling it on the fly and it didn't just like you didn't just wake up this morning and decide that felt like you know the divinely aligned thing to do today how is how is this that you can have that kind of metaphysical knowledge and and it really took me years to be honest i'd say at least five years um to start to really wrap my mind around that and to live into that and as, as i became uh you know, a senior guide and I taught more classes and I started to train as a Kabbalah instructor, not just study group leader. I was like, oh, of course, this has to be this way. Mm -hmm. We couldn't teach anything random. We couldn't teach anything because we woke up on one side of the bed this morning and decided it'd be that way. And the same thing is true for everything we do in the mm -hmm. school, like the administrative structure and the format of the classes and why things flow the way they flow. So, you know, both you and I have had a lot of experience in this now. And and you've really been working with students um, from literally all over the world. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear from your perspective, like what are some of those misconceptions that you see most frequently when, 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 especially when there's new students that are coming through the door? Like what are some of the things in their minds that can be like stopping points, myths, assumptions, misconceptions, any of that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a number of things actually that I'd, I'd like to, to touch on. And um, one of those things is that, you know, people come to the mystery school and of course they're, they're looking for a guide. That's, mm -hmm. you know, the guide is someone who will guide them and they might not even know they're looking for a guide. They might not know they're looking for a guide, but that's, that's what they'll need. They'll need right. a guide. They'll need someone to guide them. And what they are expecting based on their own presumptions and assumptions is they're, they're expecting a life coach or a therapist mm -hmm. and guides are neither neither of those things. We yeah. are not life coaches. We're not therapists. And if you are looking for someone to tell you what to do and to handhold and, you know, truly coach you through every single little step of your life, that is not what we're here to do. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite. We're initiates in a holy sacred lineage. We are guides. We are reminders. We're reminding the individual of the divinity that they have within them. Mm -hmm. We use lineage. That's the difference. That's the groundedness that you were talking about. We're not just channeling information. I'm not just, you know, a client doesn't write to me or message me and I'm channeling what I need to say to them. I'm using hermetics. I'm using metaphysics. I'm using the mm -hmm. true lineage knowledge. When we do sessions, we're following ancient processes and protocols and mm -hmm. we know work that will awaken the individual to their divinity and self. And this is not to knock therapy. It's not to knock coaching that has its yeah, place. Absolutely. It's different than this. Um, and, and the other difference is that, you know, we are, we're people. Guides are people who are on their own path of progression. It doesn't mean we're perfect. It doesn't mean we're Christ or Buddha. We are normal people who have committed to this path and are just a little further along than the person starting out. And so we have experience, knowledge that we can help guide. We're not professing to be, you know, experts or PhDs or anything like that. We just, we've been on the path. We're guiding you. We've climbed the mountain. We've done it a few times. So we, we know the pathway and we're showing you what, you know, what to do. And we're telling you, this is what you, you know, these are your, these are your tools. These are your, um, these are your literally, you know, your tools, your rituals, your, your, your what do you need in your tool bag? What do you tool bag for, for your climb up the mountain? And, um, and we're guiding you. We're not doing the walk for you. We're not climbing the mountain for you. 
we're not ha- we're not holding your hand up the mountain. And when you feel like the mountain's getting too steep, we're gonna tell tell you to keep going. Mm-hmm. You know, but you always have choice to walk back down the mountain if that's what you want to do. But we're mm-hmm. always guiding everybody to keep going. Um, and I love, you know, something that one of the first teachings, uh, founder Goodney, when I was first in the presence of founder Goodney, you know, he expressed that, you know, us in the mystery school, we are here as reminders. We're not mm-hmm. teaching you anything. We are reminding you to what you already know. We are all divine. We all have all we need within ourselves. And the, the power of metaphysics, the power of true metaphysics and uh, hermetic teachings is that they are keys that will unlock that inner knowing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're not going to answer your questions as guides. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to process. We're not going to do like, you know, psychological processing. We're actually mm-hmm. going to we're going to guide you to tools of empowerment and create space for healing and opportunities for healing and growth. And it's mm-hmm. absolutely your choice. It's absolutely the individual's choice to walk up that mountain, but we're going to show you, here's the map. Here are some tools. We've walked the mountain. This is what we know works. If you want to try it, come along with us. Yeah. So that's one of the, I think one of the major misconceptions people have um, when they come is that they're looking for therapists and that's just not, you know, not what we do. Yeah. And uh, what else, what are some of the, what are some of like the fears and the things that kind of come from, you know, cause that's a conscious mind thing that you're talking about. Maybe, but maybe not, maybe it's subconscious mind. Maybe someone just makes the assumption that it's, it's not even a questioned assumption, but then there's also the, so there's that level, but there's also like the, you know, the mysteries bring light of course, into like these deep, deep layers of our being and that stimulates stuff that comes out. So like, what are, what are some of those things that like pop out for people, their fears or their, their judgments or their doubts? Like, cause that, that often really gets into the nitty gritty of things that, you know, those often stand as some, in my experience, some of the bigger barriers mm-hmm. to people Absolutely. really being able to progress. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the main ones that comes up is that people think we're a cult. Mm-hmm. that's, you know, a cult or a pyramid scheme or that we're trying to somehow sway you into some kind of mind control thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, when people have that trigger of what, are, you know, what are you guys, are you a cult? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think for most of us as guides and teachers, we, we've experienced ha- that, you know, people mm-hmm. have, have said that to us. Um, or someone recently asked me, is it like a fraternity initiation? You know, like, do I have to get naked? Like, do I, you know, right. am I going to be hazed? Like, what no, is, what right. kind of initiation is going to take place here? Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, I, I think that's a, a big one. Uh, you know, I've, you know, even written an article about the truth about cults, you know, and the, mm-hmm. how the mystery school how the mystery school is essentially not a cult. And, you know, a couple of the, the keys that we know the mystery school is not a cult is that, you know, cults control your, your food, mm-hmm. your sleep, and I try to isolate you. And we do none of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, your involvement with the modern mystery school is a choice. You know, it's if you come to us, if you come to a guide or a life activation practitioners, talk to us about what we do. If it resonates, great. Try the life activation, try the full spirit activation try initiation. Um, if it doesn't resonate, that's okay. We wish you on, you know, wish you well on your journey. There are many pathways back to God. Right. Um, but we, you know, we're not trying to control anybody. In fact, that's the opposite. We're trying to teach you to control yourself. Mm -hmm. People feel out of control in, in life, you know, people. So many ways. In so many ways, they're stressed about their jobs, their relationships, their bills, their kids, whatever it may be, people yeah. feel out of control. They can't control anything in their life. So what can you control? You, the only thing you can control is your own mind, your yeah. own heart, your own life. And how do you do that? How do you do that after years of layers of you know, belief systems and patterns being ingrained through school or religion or any of those, that kind of things? If anything, you know, we're kind of like a deprogramming. Right. 
we're, we're not we're not trying to program you we're trying to deprogram you we're trying to unwind the things that have limited you in your life you know yeah. we're trying to we're trying to empower you to think for yourself to go beyond those automatic responses go beyond those subconscious knee-jerk reactions um you know uh to to really think for yourself to tap in to be guided into you know reminded who am i truly who mm -hmm. am i truly um and that is you know that is being initiated into the mysteries that is to to dive into the mystery that is you and that's mm -hmm. what we're guiding you to do we're trying to help you to climb that mountain of the unknown of yourself and mm -hmm. not trying to just feed you information to make you believe something else you know that, not that's gonna... what's so interesting too is like we're doing it with energy 98 percent of the time 99 percent of the time not concepts because mm -hmm. the mystery school is not just not a cult but it's also not even a religion no because we don't no. we're not teaching you like well you know we don't say here's here's this text or this teaching that like this is the truth yeah. and i think that can really in my experience at least kind of like spin people the first year or two in the mystery school they're like well i'm coming to learn the mysteries i'm coming to know myself what is the truth of myself and we're like you need to figure that out exactly like, but, but but weren't you going to tell me the truth of myself it's like no we're not going to tell you the truth of anything we're going to tell you that you know the like the hermetic aphorism all truths are but half truths and you have to find your own truth and then people need to wrestle with that for a while just to even have baseline acceptance that maybe there isn't like one truth that they're going to find um, and that we're going to teach that not just with concepts because the concepts this was i had so much trouble with this christina when i came <laughs> to the school because i was like i want concepts i want like i had come from a background of like buddhist philosophy and like new age stuff and like angels and ascended masters and like every angel has its write up with all these different authors and like you know chakra books this thick and like you've got to know all about how they work and and then the mystery school is like yeah you know you're an eternal being and you've never been born you can never die and i was like are you joking like that's the main that's like a that's a teaching like there must be more like this is a joke right and then i got initiated and my whole life started changing within months. I was living a totally different life. And I'm like, well, well, 10 years of philosophy didn't change my life, but a few months of initiation did, huh? Maybe I have something to learn. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. I, you know, echo all of that. And, you know, similarly, uh, when I joined the mystery school and became initiated, and like I said, like I mentioned, uh, I struggled with some anxiety and some, you know, some kind of depression and, and that in many ways I withdrew myself, but then in also other ways I lashed out. And mm. that was kind of my personality at the time. And when I started getting involved with the mystery school, that changed, you know, the first thing I noticed was my road rage was gone. You know, mm. the first thing I, you know, next thing I noticed that like, you know, jealousy in my relationship shifted. You know, so many things started to shift and actually, you know, I was raised uh, Roman Catholic. My, you know, my family's deeply involved with the church. And um, I remember my mom having concerns when I first joined the mystery school. I'm like, what are you in some kind of cult? What are you doing? You know, she was nervous for me. She thought it was, she thought there was something wrong. And, but then after, you know, a few months, she, you know, she came around and she said to me, she goes, I don't really understand what it is you're doing, but I noticed that you're not as angry. I noticed <laughs> that you're happy. So obviously it's working. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll never forget that moment because that, that meant a lot to me. And, and that was a testament that, you know, if my mother notices someone who probably doesn't get the best side of me all the time mm -hmm. and some things, some things are definitely changing. And, and, you know, when someone is starting in the mystery school and they and they they are worried or concerned or, you know are you guys a cult follow the fruits mm -hmm. follow the fruits you know look at how your life is changing look at the people that you're talking to do they look mm -hmm. you know do they look like they're under you know some kind of mind control do they you know do they sleep in a commune do they not have con you know control over their lives do they not have control over their relationships because actually, you know, we want 
we want you here at the mystery school to go back out into your lives. We don't want you to hang around, right? We don't want you, you know, we don't want you hanging around this building too long. We want you to go yeah. home. We want you to take this amazing energy and light that you've learned and to take it into your life, to improve your relationships, have healthy, strong relationships. You know, we don't, we don't want to control what you eat. We want you to eat healthy, but we don't want to control what you eat. We don't, we don't want you to live in a commune with us. Um, and yes, actually people have asked that. Like we've had inquiries of people say, you know, how do I come train at the school, you know, and sleep and lodging? What's the arrangement? It's like, no, right. that's absolutely, you know, not what we, we do at all. We want people to go out into the world. We want people to, we want people to feel good, live in joy, empower themselves mm -hmm. and take that out into their lives and live their purpose. And if we get to help navigate and remind you of your purpose, that's a beautiful thing. And that's our job. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, you were reflecting a minute ago on your initial experience, like with your parents and, you know, you and I both got initiated in, in like our mid twenties or you, I think in your early twenties. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I got initiated and my parents had, I, cause I've been doing, I've been doing so much spiritual work for like 10 years before I got initiated. And literally every, every time I would go study something with some other system, my parents would just like roll their eyes and be like, oh my God, like when is our son going to grow up and like mm -hmm. stop wasting time and money and all this stuff, studying all these things. And then something totally shifted the day after I got initiated, I went over to their house and they were all of a sudden super interested mm -hmm. in what I was doing. And rather than being dismissive and sort of eye rolling, they were like, what, did, what, did, what was that class you just took? Like, cause it, it, that was the empower thyself in, in, you know, initiation weekend. And they're like, you're, you're different. And you know, my, my sister um, had always just sort of been like, yeah, that's whatever you're doing. That's whatever you're doing. And then after I got initiated, she became more interested. And eventually, you know, now she literally like teaches classes in the room next door. You know, we, we run MMS Boston center together. Yeah. So it's, to me, that's such a testament to the, the strength of how this work like heals families and brings people together. And, um, you know, my whole family got initiated, like before my parents passed away over the last decade, it's like, they both got initiated. My dad even became a ritual master. That's like mind blowing that he would ever do such a thing when, you know, he was like teaching my Sunday school classes growing up and you know, had all sorts of uh, thoughts and opinions about what was what and who and what God is and what's, what's the nature of reality. And then for him to be open to the light like that and just say, okay, like this is obviously working yeah. for you. And I want to do this too. It's just it's really amazing. And I see that all the time with people and their families and the judgments that people have early on when they look at the results in their life or the lives of their loved ones who are doing this work. And then they see how many um, good things are taking place and unfolding for their, their family member. They're just like, I want to do that too. Mm, um, every year I have students in Kabbalah like that. Every year I have students in initiation like that. So it's really, it's really cool. And really rewarding. Yeah. So I'd love to, speaking of that, talk about why people haven't heard of the mystery school before. Cause that's also this I think for some people, they're like, well, if this is so amazing, like, wouldn't this be on every billboard and in every school? And like, wouldn't all my friends be doing mystery school? And shouldn't it be all over social media and like TV? And like, why is that not the reality right now? Or why do you think there's probably a ton of answers to that? But yeah. why is this not super mainstream at this time in history? Well, um, I have a, you know, a few thoughts on that. Um, and the, the, the main answer I would say is because it's still a mystery. Mm. As much as we are a mystery school and an open mystery school, and we, you know, I'm sitting in a building right now that has a huge sign out front with the Modern Mystery School logo on mm. a main, you know, busy street. And people will still, you know, walk in from time to time and say, you know, I've driven down this road every day for 10 years and I just noticed the sign today. Mm. you know that's that's fascinating you know why mm. that happens and there you know there's kind of a saying you know for those who have eyes to see for those who have ears to hear it's in the bible mm -hmm. for those who have eyes to see those who have ears to hear it's it's still hidden 
despite being an open mystery school, having a public website, a public, you know, facade, open door policy, um, there's still kind of an energetic veil that's there hmm. because it's a calling. The mystery school to, to be initiated, to be, you know, even activated to a degree, it's a calling. There's a resonance. It's hmm. not logical. No. And it's not something you can, you know, your brain can always wrap its, you know, mm -mm. itself around. It comes from your heart. And yeah. you have to listen to your soul's calling if you want to take these steps. And to be truthful, society has conditioned us to not hear our soul's calling. Yeah. We've been taught to, you know, listen only to logic. And um, you have to be willing to push through resistance and your own negative emotions, your own negative self-talk um, mm. to receive the light. Yeah. Because yes, like this stuff works. You do a life activation, full spirit activation, the healings, empower thyself initiation, further mm -hmm. initiations, you do Kabbalah, it works. Mm -hmm. But it's going to push through a lot of things that haven't been working. And yeah. those things that haven't been working have been ingrained in your mind since childhood. And for some, depending on when you get involved, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of thinking yeah. of in a certain way. Yeah. And here we are, you know, presenting these beliefs, like you said it yourself, like, you know, the teaching of you're an eternal being, you've never been born, you shall never die. That is just, so that's all it is? Is that all it is? Well, yeah. But, you know, to, to, to embrace that, to embrace that we are divine beings, to embrace that we are light, to embrace that um, there's, that we have a purpose, that there's more than what we're living. That this, this physical body is amazing and we should focus on it and keep it healthy and strong, but that it is only a vehicle for our spirit to live out its contract and purpose here in the physical. And think of how much of our lives we are conditioned to think that it's all about getting jobs, making money, working out at the gym or whatever it is, you know, there's more. Mm -hmm. What, so, you know, what would that look like if, if everybody, um, if everybody was into the mystery school, what would that look like? Well, what, what would that look like? What, I love to imagine that actually, that would be so incredible for the planet. It's almost like we're not just, we're just not, not there yet. Well, that's, let's imagine it because that's yeah. what, this is, this is what we're trying to do here. You know, what right. if, what if everybody listened to their soul? What if everybody actually was listening to their soul's calling and following the light within themselves? What would that look like if everybody was living their purpose? Yeah. That would be an amazing collective vision, you know? Yeah. Um, what if everybody followed their heart? What if everybody wanted to awaken to higher principles? You know, our mission in the mystery school is world peace. We want to achieve world peace. We want to, we want to create Shambhala. We want to create heaven on earth. Right. And every single person has a key to that heaven on earth. Every single person has a key to that Shambhala. Yeah. And it's inside of them and they have to peel back through all the layers to truly connect to that soul's calling to connect yeah. to what their soul is speaking. So why are they not? <sighs> because it's hard. Yeah. But we, that's what we do is we keep holding the vision for them to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all doing. That's what every, guide is doing every life activation practitioner and every initiate really is holding that vision and spreading that light that you know yes connect connect to your soul connect to your heart bring yeah. that forward so that we can create a new and better world absolutely i mean the first thing that comes to mind when you say well when you ask those questions like well, what would it be like if everyone were listening to their soul the very first thing is like well we would have no standing military forces I'm just like, well, that, you know, that wouldn't exist in the same way at all. We would you know? have no need. Right. We would have no wasted money because people wouldn't be spending 
money and effort on frivolous things that don't serve them and nurture them on the deepest levels. And then with that enormous reduction of waste, we could use our resources to build totally new things. And then all the things that just from those two of any starting point, I mean, you could start anywhere of what that would mean. Yeah. Those two things come to mind right away. And it's like, just that would move us exponentially further forward toward world peace. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if everyone was listening to their heart, there would be no division. There would be no separation. There would be, yeah. there would be acceptance, you know, that we could all live on planet earth and express different aspects of ourselves. We could have different opinions. We could have different, you know, views on how we want to express our divinity, how we want to express our inner light, how we want to express our creativity. And it wouldn't offend anybody. Right. We could just all live in, in peace and unity. And, you know, we could just do the things right now. Our world is more divided than ever. I think that's, you know, we see that playing out for all kinds of reasons, politically, COVID, all kinds of reasons. Our belief systems are actually tearing us apart, you know, and I won't even mention anything, but our belief systems are tearing us apart. And, um, but if we connected to our heart and just loved each other, loved each other, accepted each other, didn't judge each other, okay, you wanna go be there, you wanna believe that, you wanna partake of that, great, I'm gonna do this over here and we're not gonna hurt each other over it. We're not gonna hate each other about it. Mm -hmm. How beautiful is that? Yeah, it's freedom. Yeah, and so much more. Yeah. Yeah. We're coming toward the end of our time here. These podcasts go so fast. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear, you know, the question that we of course get all the time is like, how do people really get involved? Like, what does it mean to really get involved in the mystery school? Like, what are those first steps and, and what can people expect? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first step and kind of like my own first steps uh, was to talk to somebody. Mm. The first step is to talk to somebody. And, you know, the couple of the first steps might be a life activation, maybe taking in a presentation like Seven Ancient Mystery School or, um, or doing some, you know, some meditation courses or meditation online if you're social distancing and <laughs> not doing sessions in person. But, um, you know, so that might become kind of your first steps, but your first steps essentially is to talk to somebody, to reach out, to connect with a life activation practitioner, a guide or a teacher. And on the Modern Mystery School INT website, so that's Modern Mystery School INT, short for international, dot com, we have certified practitioner lists of practitioners all over the world. We have practitioners all over the world. So North America, Canada, US, um, South America, Brazil, Japan, um, Asia. We also have uh, South Africa, we have Europe, we have the UK, we have practitioners all over. And you can actually look online on our website and you can see the lists, find uh, someone in your area mm -hmm. and, um, and talk to somebody, talk to a life activation practitioner, talk to a guide, and that's the first place to start. That's the first place to start. And then they'll guide you as to, you know, what's the first, you know, first thing I should do? Should I, should I get that life activation? Should I take in a meditation? Should I, you know, should I do that seven ancient mystery schools presentation, whatever it may be, um, but connect to talk to us and find out if this resonates with you. And if it, if it resonates with that soul's calling, that's ultimately what you need to, what you need to know. Yeah. Wonderful. Anything else that you want to add before we say goodbye to our audience for this evening? Stay in your heart. Listen to your soul. Keep the peace alive right now and be that light out there for everyone who, who needs it. Beautiful. Thank you for having me on your podcast, Jordan. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on, Christina. It's been a pleasure. Again, my name is Jordan Bain. This is Christina Lozano. It's been my guest tonight. And this podcast is called Unveiling. Tune in next week. We're going to bring Verla Wade back on. We're going to talk about angels. So super excited. There's all sorts of deep teachings with that next week. So take good care, everyone. Happy New Year for those of you celebrating the Western calendar New Year. And we will see you next week. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night, everyone.